Brad Locamp. I'm from. Uh, I'm a contractor at the National Library of Medicine. Today, I'm going to be talking about Simple ITK Advanced Image Processing for Python. Simple ITK is a new wrapper for the Insight Segmentation and Registration Toolkit. It's designed, and its goals were to help rapid prototyping, along with facilitate education, and also expand the uh, user base of ITK for by exposing the algorithms that are in there to new users. Um, in short, it's a more Pythonic interface to ITK. So by adapting, you know, a lot of the principles in the SciPy community, we've achieved many of these these goals. Um, so. Thank you for that inspiration. Um, so the outline of the rest of my talk, I'm going to talk about what exactly is ITK. I'm going to explain some of the key features that make simple ITK different than other image processing libraries that are out there. I'm going to briefly go over a list of the algorithms available and then show some examples. So ITK was uh, initially uh, conceived by the National Library of Medicine in 1999 as an initiative for open source software tools to analyze the visible human data set. It was developed by a group of both academic and commercial organizations, including Kitware, GE, Uni University of uh, Utah, University of Pennsylvania, and UNC Chapel Hill. Its goals were to provide a, a foundation for, to enable research in image processing and biomedical image computing along with providing a catalog of algorithms available to the community as well. These goals led to a design that was very modular and very uh, component oriented so you can mix and match a variety of components to solve problems. Notably this does not include providing a user interface or GUI as other toolkits did that and the, and the uh, thought was that would defocus the, uh, the toolkit. Currently, we have an active community that helps with regular releases and patches. And there's also the Insight Journal, uh, which is uh, open science, uh, which was for, for open science and to promote uh, and, sh and, so, and so that users can share their algorithms in, in the ITK framework. So biomedical image computing has certain requirements that are different than other image processing, than just plain image processing. You always need to keep in mind three different coordinate frames at the same time. You have your basic array indexing, your IJK into your arrays. You also have how that indexing gets mapped to physical space. This is done through metadata, which includes spacing, origin, and orientation. However, just the XYZ coordinates are not enough to uniquely define the coordinate system. You also need to know how the, those coordinates get mapped to the patient, to your left and your right. You don't want to mix up your left and your right in medical imaging because the wrong organ could be removed. This is very important to do serious work. Um, ITK uses left LPS coordinate systems when reading DICOM. So some of the key features in, a, in simple ITK is a lot of the features we don't expose from ITK. We simplify it, we make the algorithms so they don't explicitly depend on the types of your images, and a lot of uh, things are hidden so they just smoothly work like it does for a lot of the other SciPy uh, packages that are out there. We also have worked hard to try to provide binary built distributions for many, uh, many systems. Generally, this works on your system Python, um, the Pythons that are ABI compatible with the python.org. Um, it, it, uh, it doesn't work with uh, in thoughts distribution and canopy distribution, anaconda distribution. Um, well also to our filters, we provide both a procedural and an object-oriented interface. And to do biomedical image computing, almost all of our algorithms support 3D along with 2D, and many also work on multiple component images. Uh, we also provide overloaded operators that operate in, this, uh, in these images with these, this additional metadata and constrain those operators only to work on images that have the similar metadata. You, so to add two images in simple ITK, with it, you need to have the same coordinate system in addition to having the same shape. And of course, we support easy exporting to, of, uh, to, to NumPy. So we also support some uh, additional application level features. Um, most of our algorithms are multi-threaded. Also, when you're in ITK, the GIL in Python is unlocked. So this enables uh, easy use of uh, the Python threading library to do uh, lightweight threading. We also support events and callbacks to enable uh, progress reporting and aborting long-running algorithms. 
so one of the important features we get from ITK is a wide variety of image I.O. formats. So of course you can read in your DICOM directly off your scanner that you have and get in all that metadata. We also support common file formats that are used across the biomedical imaging community. Um, these are all in the default binary distribution. You can also reconfigure ITK and build simple ITK on top of that with additional optional pack I.O. packages. And if you don't want to make, if you just want to use simple ITK just for I.O., that's okay. You can use, it's simple ITK is available as a plugin to the SciKit image uh, package. Um, so we have many algorithms available in simple ITK from ITK. Um, we have a large number of smoothing and denoising. We have anisotropic diffusion, curvature flow, bilateral smoothing, of, and of course your, your standard mean and median, that kind of thing. We have a wide variety of morphology filters, both binary and grayscale. You know, of course your erosion and dilation, also your top hats, your geodesic erosions, and your uh, erosions and dilations by reconstruction. After you've done your segmentation, you need to manipulate your labels, and we have a large number of filters also available there to compute statistics, to do label votings on neighborhoods, to analyze connected components, and to relabel based on these attributes. In addition to this, we also have a large number of standard image processing algorithms, including convolution, deconvolution, distance maps, fast marching, edge detectors, canny edge detectors, feature detectors, bias field correction, and many, many more. We have in all over 270 image filters available in Simple ITK. Some I would like to especially highlight here, some additional algorithms, is we have uh, several level set implementations, including geodesic active contours, which is a level set implementation which has both a speed and an a speed image and an advection vector uh, image to control your level set. We also have some basic region growing algorithms, along with watersheds and a large number of automatic thresholding. Currently working hard for a fall release of uh, 0.9, um, which is going to include some additional statistic attributes and uh, a lot of registration work, including demons registration. Um, this is also going to add in, finally, the uh, ITK Im image registration method, which is ITK is well known for, which contains four modular components, an interpolator, a metric, an optimizer and a transform where you can choose and mix, match, mix and match these different components. In all, there will be over 10,000 different permutations of these that can be done to perform registration. So how do you get started with simple ITK? Um, currently, what seems to work best for system pythons is easy install. I know it's deprecated, but the eggs seem to work for binary downloads with how we have it packaged. Um, if that isn't your cup of tea, then you can also manually download wheels from SourceForge. Um, for other distributions, you can get information on how to build Simple ITK on the wiki. So let's look at our first example. Here, we want to segment the blue ice, uh, segment the blue ice away from the visible human head and just leave the head. To do this, we use a connected components implementation which estimates a Gaussian distribution for the blue ice, given some seeds, and iterates on that and refine that. Followed by some morpho morphologi morphological operations to remove the small bits, and then finally we mask the image, leaving just the head that we targeted. So earlier I talked about the importance of physical uh, space and how, that, how the orientation is rendered. So here we have two images, the visible human head along with the MRI head. These are actually acquired with different fast axes in different directions. And here we resample the two on top of each other without, with the identity transform. Because we have the metadata, we, we get the images are essentially oriented in the same direction. However, they're not aligned correctly. Um, at the beginning here, you can see that the nose is pointing down of the MRI image just like the RGB head. So this is done because we don't directly map from the image grid of one space to the image grid of another, but we instead go through the, uh, the physical coordinate space where we apply the transform and then invert the uh, physical space transformation back. So now we can use registration to correctly align the MRI head and the RGB visible human head. 
Here is a snippet of a part of the code that's used to do that with the registration framework. This is uh, currently available in the uh, zero dot in, in, in the master and will be available in a binary distribution this fall. And hopefully at the end of the month we'll have a uh, binary distribution of a, a beta, 0 0.9 beta, to have that. So basically what we do here is we use a center transform initializer to get a rough estimate between the two. And then we choose, and then we begin to construct the image registration metric, which includes using mutual information. And we do a sparse sampling of that with uh, just 10% of the pixel values. We choose an optimizer, and then we choose, uh, we choose an optimizer, and we set up a, a scales estimator, and then we also do this across multiple scales. Um, I also wasn't happy with results like this, so I ended up adding in an additional affine transformation on top of that. So this, these results here are both the Euler transform followed by the affine. Uh, so that uh, concludes most of the talk. Again, we have some more information here about just reminding you to just use the deprecated easy install if you want to install the simple ITK binaries, along with links to our homepage, our wiki, and uh, we have some notebooks if you want to learn how to get started with uh, Simple ITK with some examples. Thank you.